Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over how to create enemies in Pygame. So in the previous video, we created platforms and we added collision detection with these platforms. So if I run the program to show you what we currently have, you can see we have Mega Man over here and we have these platforms and we are colliding with these platforms. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is create an enemy. So let's go ahead and do that. So for the enemy, we have four images and this enemy is called a metal, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And I think short for metal is met, but this is a classic enemy in the Mega Man game. And this enemy has two forms, one where it's active and looking at Mega Man and the other where it's in defense position. So when Metal is in the defense position, it is guarding itself and blocking bullets from Mega Man. Now for this tutorial, I'm just going to focus on creating the enemy and detecting collision with the enemy. In later videos, we're going to go over shooting bullets and changing the state of Metal to guard against the bullets. So for now, we're just going to stick with showing the enemy on the screen and detecting collision. All right, so first thing we need is to define the width and height of the enemy. So over here, I'm going to define Metal width and I'm going to set it to 36 and Metal height, I'm going to set this to 30. So if I hover over the image, you can see the size is 180 pixels wide and 150 pixels tall. So the ratio should be 18 to 15 for width to height. So you just take 18 and 15 and multiply it by two and you'll get 36 and 30. Okay, so this fits the ratio of 18 to 15. All right, so once we have the variables defined for the width and height, let's load the image. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to load the left image because by default, if Mega Man is facing to the right side, the enemies are facing to the left side, looking at Mega Man. So here, I'm going to just load one image, Metal image left, load image, and the image name is metal-left.png, and the width and height, Metal width, and Metal height. Now let's create a class to represent this enemy. So similar to how I have a class for the player and the tiles, I'm going to create another class to represent the enemy. So here I'm going to do class metal and it's going to inherit from pygame.rec. Let's create a constructor. And here we just need to pass in the X and Y positions. So pygame.rec dot underscore in it self x y and the width and height will be metal width and metal height now we need to define additional properties such as velocity in the Mega Man games metal does not move at all it is a stationary enemy it stays in one place and just fires bullets at Mega Man However, you can have Metal fall down from the sky. So while it does not move horizontally in the X direction, Metal can drop down from the sky. So it's moving in the Y direction vertically. So I'm going to add a velocity Y, but first let's add the image. So the image is going to be Metal image left, and then I'll do self.velocity Y and set it to zero. And then for the direction by default, Metal is facing left, so self.direction. I'm going to set this to left. And just to keep it consistent with the player, although Metal does not jump, we might have other enemies that jump. So I'm just going to add a data member here for jumping. And I'll set this to false. And another reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to use the same collision function that I used for the player for detecting tile collision. So we're going to make changes to those functions that we wrote in the previous tutorial. All right, so we have our class. Now let's create an object. So here I'm just going to create one enemy for now. And for the X position, I'm just going to make it three tiles from where the player is standing. So three tiles to the right. So tile size times three. And for the Y position, I'm going to make Metal start 
six tiles from the top of the screen. So tile size times six. So we have our metal object. Now we need to draw the enemy. So here I'll do window.blit metal.image and metal. All right, now let's save and run the program. And you can see we have the enemy over here. Currently the enemy is not moving and that is because velocity Y is zero and we do not update the position and apply gravity to metal in our move function. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go back up. And in our move function over here, I'm going to add a section for metal. So we're going to apply gravity to the velocity for metal. So metal.velocity y plus equal gravity. And then metal.y plus equal metal.velocity y. Okay, so it's pretty much the same as we did for the player, except we're applying it to this enemy. All right, let's save and run the program. And you can see Matal just fell down off the screen. So the next thing we need to do is add collision detection with the tiles for Matal, similar to what we did for the player. And for that, I'm going to repurpose these functions I wrote in the previous tutorial with the tiles. So here you can see currently we are just calling these functions and assuming that we only check collision with the tiles for the player. But since we have the enemy and we might have various enemies, we want to apply these tile collision checks for all the enemies as well. So in that case, instead of making it default to player, I'm going to pass in another parameter called character and I'm just going to replace player with character. And I'm going to do the same in these two functions over here. So I'm going to pass in a character so we're passing in character to collision X and then for check tile collision, we'll pass in the character and I'm going to replace the word player with character. So over here, here. All right, and let's do the same with check tile collision Y. So now over here, we need to pass in player and player. So check tile collision X, we pass in the player and check tile collision Y, we pass in the player. And over here, I'm going to do the same thing as I did for the player. So I will call check tile collision Y and pass in Matal. And we don't need to do this in the X direction since as I mentioned before, Matal does not move horizontally. Instead, we just have Matal drop from the sky. So let's save and run the program. Hopefully you saw that Matal basically dropped from the sky around over here and you can see collision detection still works and Matal does not fall through the tiles as it did earlier. Now it's standing on this tile over here. Now the last thing I want to do is check for a collision between Matal and Mega Man. So if I run into Matal, we should get a collision. So over here, after we've updated the player position and metal position, I'm going to check if player dot collide rec metal. For now, I'm just going to print collision with metal. All right, let's save and run the program. Okay, so metal drops down, collides with the tile and stays there. And I'm going to run into the metal enemy. And you can see we get a bunch of print statements. Okay. So as long as I'm touching the enemy here, we are getting print statements. And now I'm not touching the enemy and we don't have any more print statements being added. When we collide with the enemy, we would lose health, but currently we don't have a health bar. So in a later video, I'm going to create a health bar and adjust it every time we collide with the enemies. And one thing to note here is that when I'm colliding with this enemy, we are getting constant collision. So in a later video, I'm going to show you how to resolve that so that when you collide with the enemy once, it only detects it as one collision for that moment so that you're not always constantly colliding with the metal. And basically, if I add a health bar right now and I touch the enemy, well, the health bar is just going to disappear quickly because we're constantly colliding with metal. So I'm going to show you how to resolve that issue in a later video. And uh, yeah, so that's it for this tutorial. Basically, we've created an enemy and we have the enemy detect collisions with the tile and with the player. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to create multiple enemies.
So uh, yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more Python game programming tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.